I don't really have much experience working with others on games. The first and last time that I did it was making Bad Egg back in 2019. A few weeks ago, however, I started making a new game with two other people. Welcome to Mushroom Game. Let's start at the beginning. No, the very beginning. Hey, I'm Fartfish. Around early April, I started playing around with this palette called Funky Future and created this doodle sheet of pretty funky characters and tiles. I made a little prototype with these in Godot before I asked Dakota if he wanted to work on the game with me since he is the most talented game de- Dakota, I'm not saying this. Since he is the most talented game developer I have ever met. I thought the art looked amazing, so I agreed to do the coding while he did the art. However, I was still trying to learn Unity at the time, so development didn't actually start for another month. During that month, we decided to have the game be mushroom-themed and started planning the scope of the project. We decided on making it a mini Metroidvania with three areas, three abilities, and one final boss with the possibility of one mini boss. Also during this time, Fartfish introduced me to his friend Line, who makes fantastic music. Oh hey, that's me. I stalked Dakota enough until he eventually gave in and let me make some music and sounds for his game, which is probably playing in the background right now. Let me just say being able to work with Dakota is truly a once in a lifetime opportunity, since he's quite literally the epitome of game development excellence. And I wanted money. After aforementioned month, I got started by making a simple platformer controller. There weren't any animations yet because unfortunately during that month of downtime, Fartfish's hard drive broke. And he lost a lot of work, including the animations that he did for Mushroom Game. We need an actual name for this game. Our two main ideas are Toadstool and Spore Child. Let us know what you think is better in the comments below. Hard drive issues aside, after a lot of time trying to figure out how auto titling works in Unity, I finally got it fully implemented. I ran into a little bit of trouble when the player got stuck on walls, but it was a simple fix. All it required was adding a zero friction physics material to the player. However, you can still jump infinitely. After making a foot collider and checking if it was touching the ground, it was fixed and I moved on to making the variable jumping. If you don't know what variable jumping is, it basically means you jump higher the longer you hold down the jump button. Now, I wanted to have a dynamic camera for this game. I wanted it to be able to zoom out and in as well as follow the player throughout the game or stay in one spot. Cinemachine made this extremely easy and I only had to write a few lines of code to get this fantastic system and transition working. After that, I got to work on implementing some of the sounds that Lyden made, including the walking, landing, and jumping. Speaking of jumping, no Metroidvania is complete without movement abilities, so I created a double jump and a wall jump. At around this point, Fartfish got around to remaking the animations for the player, so I implemented them and they all look great. By the time I finished implementing those, Fartfish had just finished the sprites with the spikes, so I got to implementing the functionality for them. I set up a checkpoint system similar to Hollow Knight's because I think it works well. Essentially, once you pass a certain space, the game stores that location, and if you collide with a hazard, then you're transported back to that position. Got the functionality of it working before I added particle effects. This was actually Line's idea. The particles are very work in progress right now. I want to make them not only look generally better, but I also want to make them trail behind rather than being stuck in the same position, if that makes sense. Y you'll see what I mean when I figure out how to do it. I figured it out. Now that the particles are fixed, I can get started on the obtaining of abilities. We decided pretty early on that the abilities you gain will come from spores, which will come from... Eh. We'll save where they come from for the next devlog. Anyway, colliding with one of these will give you the ability that's assigned to it. Once that was done, I started on the combat for the game. I gave the player a sword swipe, but it took an ungodly amount of time to get the animations for it working. Man, I'm gonna... I'm gonna break my monitor, I swear! Next on the agenda was to implement a health bar into the game. We decided to make the hearts mushrooms because we're clever. It's very similar to a Zelda heart system, and we can dynamically change the max health whenever we want to. 
While I was making this, I realized that having all these objects interacting with each other was going to be difficult to make work over multiple rooms for a novice like me, but eh, that's future Dakota's problem. I hate you. Anyway, let's do something fun, like implementing the dash ability into the game. We wanted to have a kind of mixture of Celeste and Hollow Knight's dashes, along with Shovel Knight's Spectre Knight's dash. This is the final product, and I think it works pretty well. We've got an attack and a dash, but there's nothing to use it on yet, so let's get to implementing the first enemy into the game. Fartfish made this little guy to be our first enemy. That's the cutest fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. The first thing that I did was set up the animations and the states. If the player gets close enough, the shroom hound, which is what we're calling it now, will enter the charging state and then the animation will change accordingly. Now that the states were set up, it was time to make the movement functional. I just added some simple movement code, basically it just checks to see if the player's X position is greater than or less than its X position, and then it applies velocity in the correct direction. I wanted the enemy to kind of wander around when it's not fighting the player, so I set up a wandering state where it moves around and stops randomly when it's not chasing the player. Oh, look at him go! Now let's make it die. I first made it so that the hound takes damage and gets knocked back when it's hit with the player's sword. The thing that I like the least so far in Unity is that it takes forever to implement sounds and animations for me. Animations and sounds just don't tend to work like they're supposed to nearly every time that I try to implement them, despite me doing them quite exactly how I'm doing them in other places. I think that I'll try out Godot sometime soon and see which I like better. Next, I made it so that the hound gets destroyed when it hits zero hit points. It's not very flashy at the moment, but it'll be better eventually. Just wait for next devilogue. Now this guy needs to stand up for himself, so let's make him damage the player. Awesome. We kind of have a playable game now, <laughs> although at the time of writing it really just kind of feels like a big mess. I think this feeling is probably common among game devs, especially when your code feels messy and when your project starts to get bigger. It's really disheartening to pour your heart into a project for you to lose interest or feel inadequate to finish it in the middle. I think this could probably be helped by making myself keep the code organized and optimized and or allowing myself more time to polish and not focus more on the getting the mechanics functional and polishing everything at the end. In the end though, it could just be Unity and or learning a new game engine. But yeah, that's all the time that I have for this devlog. Again, don't forget to vote for Toadstool or Spore Child in, for the name of the game in the comments below. But other than that, subscribe to the channel, it boosts my fragile ego, like the video. I don't know if it helps the algorithm or anything, but I still like to see it. I also have a Discord where we hang out that I don't plug very often, so join that. That's I'll, There's a link to that in the description as well. But that's it. Bye! Since he's quite literally the epitome of game development excellence. Since he's quite literally the epitome of game development excellence. Since he's quite literally the epitome of game development excellence.